You have a tailbone, but no tail. Ever wonder why that is? It was there at some point in our evolutionary history, but somewhere on the way to humans, it disappeared. Well, some new research has found that all it takes to lose an entire appendage is the addition of a sequence called ALU in the middle of a gene called TBXT, which is involved in the early development of primates. Adding the sequence changed the way that TBXT is translated into protein, which then prevented the growth of a tail. But how did the ALU sequence get there in the first place? What if I told you that it probably got up from another part of the genome and inserted itself into the middle of the TBXT gene all on its own? Okay, hold on, let's take a step back. Generally, we know DNA as a blueprint for proteins that drive our body's function. Proteins that might tell your developing body, hey, grow a tail right here. But a lot of our DNA doesn't actually code for proteins at all. Not coding DNA is sections of DNA that don't contain the instructions for protein, but still play a pretty important role in our body and make up most of our genome. And a huge chunk of that proportion, coming in at almost 50% of our entire genome, is a peculiar class of genetic sequence called transposable elements. Transposable elements, or transposons, or jumping genes as the cool kids say, are sections of DNA that can actually move around on their own in the genome. They were first discovered by Dr. Barbara McClintock in maize all the way back in the 1940s. She found that a portion of the maize chromosome was able to break off and reintegrate into another part of the chromosome, called a mutable locus. Since then, we've found a ton of these mutable loci, not only in corn, but also in bacteria, viruses, and ourselves, humans. So how exactly do these loci move around the genome? Basically, transposons use our molecular machinery to copy and paste themselves into different parts of the genome. One of the most infamous moving sequences, and the one that we think gave humans our characteristic tailless appearance, is the ALU element. ALU is a non-coding sequence that pops up all over the genome of not only humans, but all primates. And in humans, this specific transposon makes up more than 10% of your DNA. And like other transposons, ALU keeps replicating itself within the genome. Because of this, transposons are known as selfish elements. They keep trying to make more of themselves, whether or not it benefits the organism that they're in. In fact, research suggests that most transposons have viral origins, specifically one class of viruses, retroviruses, which are known to move around and incorporate into their host. So even if they are selfish, these ALU sequences have to be doing something, right? Well, mainly they just vibe and move around. But in the process of vibing, they tend to have some side effects. They can change the expression of a gene by moving near it, cause certain diseases, and even influence evolution by adding diversity and more potential for mutation in the genome. All of this can happen within a single cell, and it won't really affect a person much, unless that cell is one that's early on in development and that will pass its genes on to most of the cells in the body. So while we have a lot of transposable elements that have mysterious origins and functions moving around, they don't really affect us in our day-to-day -day life. But sequences don't just move around inside their original cell, and our mobile DNA doesn't just consist of non-coding sequences. Some sections of our DNA have developed systems to use proteins like an intercellular school bus. Pack your bags, class, because we're going on a trip across the membrane to our cellular neighbor. Enter the cellular school bus, the ARC gene. ARC is normally active in your neurons. It regulates synaptic plasticity, which is the strength of the connection between the neurons. One of ARC's functions is getting its RNA from one cell to another, which it does by wrapping up its genetic material inside a capsule, exiting the cell, entering another... Uh, oh, wait a second, this sounds really familiar. That's because this is also what viruses do. Turns out, our best guess for where ARC comes from is basically just that. A virus that inserted itself into our genome long ago and happened to evolve a useful purpose. Part of the evidence for this is ARC's resemblance to the GAG protein. GAG is a viral protein that assists in the mRNA transport of the retrovirus HIV. Similarly to GAG, ARC forms a capsid to get its mRNA from one place to another, either to be replicated or to be reintegrated somewhere else. But while GAG sneakily helps HIV move around its genetic material, ARC helps us by allowing our neurons to regulate the way they form connections, leading to synaptic plasticity. So like a lot of transposons, while ARC doesn't initially seem to belong, it's managed to find a niche in the mechanisms of our bodies. Over time, humans have picked up a lot of these retroviral sequences, and while in most cases they're just hanging out, 
there are some that we've repurposed for ourselves. So on top of all the rearrangement within our own genomes across evolutionary eras, we've had our share of external genes wander in too. It's no wonder we can't keep track of where all our DNA comes from. And while some of the more mysterious members of humans moving genome can cause problems or just be downright confusing, it's all part of what makes us who we are. It's kind of poetic to think that the set of DNA at our core is just as mobile and dynamic as we are. 